Most people don't have much time these days. Everyone is busy and they need to know what's best and they need to know it as quickly as possible. If you're sick of watching boring 20 minute reviews, tune in. This is a bullet review. The Samsung Galaxy Note 2 versus the HTC One. The Galaxy Note 2 was released in August of 2012 and its versatility hit home with millions. And it's becoming a cult classic. The HTC One was released in February of 2013 and it's got the power of a horse with the build quality to match. Let's take a look at the Galaxy Note 2 first up and the first category we'll look at is build quality. The Galaxy Note 2's design is either one that you love or hate. While its polycarbonate plastic feel may annoy some, it's built like that for a reason. You see, I've had my phone for almost a year now and there's hardly a dent or a scratch on it after many bumps and falls and that kind of thing. The same can't be said for the HTC One though. In about the four months that I've had the device, it's gone through the same treatment as my Galaxy Note 2, but it's suffered many more chips and dents. If you're careful or have a case, there's nothing to really worry about, but I'm just being realistic. Not everyone out there is going to babysit their phone. That being said, it's probably the best feeling phone I've ever held. So let's see the score. The Note 2 gets a 6 out of 10, and the HTC One a 7.5. Points were deducted for fragility. Let's talk about the audio. Obviously the HTC One has an advantage of the front-facing dual speakers with a dynamic EQ named Beats Audio. It's loud, crisp, it's definitely the best speakers I've heard on a smartphone. The Note 2 speakers aren't bad either, they're the standard run-of-the-mill rear mono speakers. They're loud too, but just not as loud. When placed on the table, the speakers are slightly raised and it reflects the sound outwards. It's excellent for casual listening. The HTC One gets a 9 out of 10 and the Note 2 gets a 7 out of 10. Let's take a look at the screens. You're looking at 268 pixels per inch on the Galaxy Note 2 versus 468 pixels per inch on the HTC One and 5.5 inches versus 4.7 inches respectively. There's no doubt that the HTC One screen is sharper, super clear, has better color balance and better outdoor visibility. That being said, the Note 2 screen size is irresistible. It makes working with everything a whole lot easier and there's just more to see at a given glance. But if we're strictly speaking about the screen, that's just not enough here. The HTC One gets an 8 out of 10 and the Note 2 gets a 6 out of 10. Let's talk about productivity. With split screen, real time multitasking, pop up browsers and a pop up video player as stock, Combined with a stylus with more built-in functions that you can poke, you know, a stylus at, the Note 2 is in a league of its own here, and the HTC One just becomes another phone in comparison. The Note 2 receives a perfect 10 here, and the HTC doesn't come close in this department, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Let's move on to something that's critically important, performance. With the HTC One, everything is about speed. Every little detail is just plain quick. Consider the simple action of waking up the phone. Just look at the difference for yourself. But in reality, who really cares about a fraction of a second while waking a phone? Let's go deeper. Loading web pages on the same Wi-Fi network with the memory cleared, and it's pretty much the same story. HTC's scrolling algorithm is extremely fluid and the best I've seen on Android. The sliding effect even feels smoother than the Forbidden Fruits iOS. That being said, the Note 2 is still pretty quick, but comparing it to the fastest phone I've ever used, it goes something like this. The HTC One gets a 9.5 out of 10, and the Note 2 gets a 6.5 out of 10. HTC has done some serious optimization here, because we all know that even though phones like the Galaxy S4 are more powerful on paper, they just don't show this kind of speed. Most people want to know about battery life, let's talk about it. Now, once again the Note 2 comes into a league of its own here. It can easily get you through a day, and you can have no problems chilling with two days of battery usage under your belt. It's simply a modern marvel with a 3100mAh removable battery. It's a godsend for power users. The HTC One on the other hand, doesn't receive my nod of approval. With a 2300mAh battery, a full day of usage is doable if you're not careless but you do find yourself getting a little worried at the 30% mark. Couple this with a long charging time, and it's not the prettiest picture. 
The Note 2 gets a 10 out of 10, and the HTC One a 6 out of 10. Let's talk about the cameras. Both devices offer very different approaches to camera optics. The HTC One features a 4 megapixel ultra pixel camera. It offers good low light performance, but it's still a bit hit and miss. The low pixel count makes pictures lose some of their sharpness when zooming in. Pictures are generally fine when viewing them on a smartphone or a PC, but not anything bigger than that. There's also the HTC Zoe mode, which acts as a little video and multi-photo snapshot of your favourite moments in life. There's a whole host of extra features like HDR, panorama, scene modes, filters and effects, and 60 frame per second video recording, and much more. What the HTC lacks in pixels, it definitely makes up in video quality. The Note 2 offers much the same in terms of camera options, but throws in a few extra things such as 1 8 high speed video recording, smile shot, buddy share, and the like. Both phones score an 8 out of 10, and you'll definitely be satisfied with either camera. Okay, so we're almost there. Let's wrap this thing up. Some quick extra points. These are both phones after all. So how's the call quality? I can say call quality is quite good on either device, except the Galaxy Note 2 was slightly louder. On a side note, people often complain that HTC devices are very slow to get updates. Well, I live in Australia. That's right, Australia, all the way out there in Perth, which is in the middle of nowhere. And I got the Android 4.2 update pretty quickly. Here, we get our phones about three months after everywhere else. So that's actually pretty good. All right, so the very last area, value. Value is very important these days, so let's check it out. The Galaxy Note 2 16GB model runs for about 550 Australian dollars, while the HTC 32GB model goes for about 750 Australian. Taking into account the unbelievable battery life, amazing productivity potential, and expandable memory, the Galaxy Note 2 is still a very attractive choice for those looking to get more bang for their buck. On the other hand, if you want a ridiculously fast phone with a great screen, sound, and design, and really don't find yourself taking notes that often, the HTC One will make more sense for you. So the score, the Note 2 gets a 9 out of 10, and the HTC One gets a 7 out of 10. If you're one of those people that can't deal with the it depends on you conclusion, here are the final results. The Note 2 gets a bullet score of 78.1%, and the HTC One gets a flat 75%. It was really close, but the Galaxy Note 2 takes it by hair. I know there's gonna be a lot of fighting and controversy in the comment section, maybe some riots and bombs, but which phone do you like better? You may have an HTC One or Galaxy Note 2. I'd like to hear your opinion in the comment section below. All right, so that just about wraps it up for today. But before I leave, I just wanna leave you with a little clip of my latest video, which I naively think will change the way people think about technology. The link to the full video will be in the description below. Enjoy. So personal computers that gave business users the advantage and the edge just went crazy. In the early 1980s, PC hardware was still extremely primitive by today's standards. This is a hard drive from around that period. Just take a look at it. It weighed about 250 kilograms and cost tens of thousands of dollars. Well, it probably stored all of the world's information, right? Nope, it stored 250 megabytes. That's about 19 times less than a DVD. For those of you who have watched the documentary, thank you so much for all of your interesting stories and comments about memories of early technology and computers. It's going to keep inspiring me to educate people. And with that, I'll catch you guys later. Have a good one. See ya.